Hello everybody and welcome to my channel, Victoria here at Radiant Moon Tarot. Today we're having a look at your daily reading, but we're also infusing this with a new moon energy. We've got a new moon in Sagittarius here, folks. And if you are on the west coast of North America, Pacific Standard Time, this new moon is going to uh, be at its height at 3.32 p.m. on the 12th of December. Um, if you're on the east coast of North America, Eastern Standard Time is 6.32 p.m. London, so if you're on UK time, uh, 11.32 p.m. And if you're over in Sydney, Australia, we've got 10.32 a.m. on the 13th of December. So between the 12th and 13th of December, we are at the height of this new moon. New moons on their own do bring in the opportunity to seed a dream, a goal to set some intentions. Great time to get a little bit of clarity. The new moon represents some unlimited potential, right? It's a fresh start. It's a new beginning. Um, it's a new way of looking at things. It's some new insights, right? And maybe some new goals and dreams. So it's a great opportunity at a great time to recognize your infinite potential. I am abundant. I am unlimited, right? Um, all those wonderful things. Okay, but we also do have this beautiful energy where we can really set some intentions. This particular new moon is Sagittarius, and Sagittarius is ruled by Jupiter. Jupiter is, of course, our planet of good luck and good fortune and knowledge, expansion, growth, wisdom, um, all these wonderful things. So we can really harness the extra magnetic power boost of this new moon to set those intentions to manifest things into your life, whether it's money or love or a new career or just improvements. Maybe you just want to manifest a little bit more love and happiness and joy into your life, right? We don't have to always focus on the big things because quite often it's the little things that grow into something big, hence the energy of the new moon. So great time for new beginnings to make a wish. Uh, the new moon can bring in healing right? We're starting fresh. We're feeling good. We're feeling like we've had a uh, uh, lighter energy and we can really harness that. The new moon is represented by the fool card, a sense of adventure, stepping out into the unknown, having fun, living your best life. So a really wonderful energy. But with that Sagittarian energy, yes, we do have the influence of Jupiter. But Sagittarius is all about kind of stepping back, looking at the big picture, um, expanding your horizons, expanding your mindset. Uh, the Sagittarian energy does bring about some ambitions. It brings some optimism. Maybe some of you are going to get a little bit of luck coming in that too. We all need a little bit of luck, right? Um, but it brings in this very honest and very philosophical uh, kind of mindset to you, right? Full of passion, full of fire, and full of excitement, hopefully, for some of you. So it's really powerful, potent energy to infuse into this new moon. Now, we do have some healing that does come in here with this. We've got Mars, and in a really good aspect with Chiron, that can bring in some wonderful number one spiritual activity, but also a little bit of healing there for you. We may have a little confusion, which is why it's important to step back a little bit and perhaps meditate, um, clear your mind, connect with the earth, whatever works for you. And because we do have this um, new moon, which is kind of you know, clash in a little bit there with Neptune. And Neptune can bring in some positive things, um, but it can also bring in um, a little bit of, you know, doubt, confusion, overwhelming kind of energy. So it's important to take that, take that step back to be really clear about what you want or just kind of, huh, when we're in the flow a little bit, things kind of make a little bit more sense. So we need to make, take our time a little bit. Um, but this can be where we're encouraged to kind of look at things, um, look at the light side of life, the bright side of life. Sagittarius is nothing if not optimistic. So if you've been feeling doubtful, if you've been feeling down, maybe you feel a little bit more optimistic with this new moon that's coming in. We do have on the 13th of December, just so you're all aware, we do have Mercury going retrograde. Ooh, it's fear in the hearts of everyone, right? Now, Mercury retrograde, even though it's got a bad rap, it happens all the time. 
um, it doesn't have to be a bad thing, right? A retrograde is to regroup, refocus, renew, repurpose, um, revisit. So you might get a second chance at something. Maybe you are going back to the drawing board on something. And maybe there's some trajectory that you've been on where you do need to take a step back and you do need to rethink it and go, hmm, is this really what I want? So it can be a really good time for reflection. Now, yes, Mercury retrograde, of course, can represent also some uh, con uh, some confusion, but some um, confusion with communication, especially with other people, misunderstandings, things like that. So just be really cautious with the written word. And this can be emails, text messages. This can also be any kind of documents, right? Make sure that you are rereading everything to make sure that you understand the context, right? And when we all know when we have the written word, we lose a certain amount of communication via, you know, body language and uh, inflection, tone of voice, that kind of thing. So just make sure that you are rereading any kind of written documentation and that you're willing to ask questions, okay, if you don't understand something, just so that you can get that clarity and get that insight and make sure that you really do know what someone is talking about or what the point is or what you're committing to, okay? So be very extra, extra dose of caution with any kind of contracts or anything like that where you may find yourself legally obligated to something there. But ultimately, new moon, perfect time to start something new. We're heading into the new year, right? And this is a time when people do start to think about the future. It's inevitable. So see where you want to go. See what's working in your life, what's not. And just a heads up for you, we do have this Jupiter energy and the 30th of December is actually when we're going to see the October eclipse re-triggered. And so this can be where something comes to fruition for you. There could be something changing for you. So we're looking forward a little bit to the 30th of December with that message. But this is a re-triggering event. So anytime between now and the end of the year, something that you have manifested or something that um, has been in motion, been in play, or maybe been on the back burner since the October eclipse can come back again, again, re, right, re, uh, retrograde, they can come back again. And this can be where maybe you do have a second chance at something, um, a very, very fortunate opportunity, or this can be where you're maybe letting something go. And it's like, nope, we're done. We tried. Nope, we're, we're good to go. So whether it's with a partnership, something in your business life, something to do with your money, whatever it happens to be, okay, something can come to fruition. You may find closure. And yeah, maybe you do have that new beginning coming in. So let's get some cards for the collective energy. And we've got the snow moon bringing in purity. This is really very fitting for this new moon, isn't it? Because this is a cleansing, a purging, a healing, a release, a letting go, right? When something is pure, it is renewed, right? Renewed. So perfect time to start fresh, to start new, embrace this new energy. It is a snow moon um, energy coming in there. So very fitting for this time of year. This can be where, you know, if you look out or look within, right, it's like a blanket of freshly fallen snow. It's your opportunity to really rewrite your script in a beautiful, beautiful way. So cleanse and purge. Hey, okay, great time from that meditation, but also maybe to do any cord cutting rituals, anything like that. Sometimes we use the full moon for that. But you can use the new moon energy for that as well and just feel that renewed sense of self. We also have action coming in here for you guys that so you're encouraged to take action. Okay, um, now this is very, uh, very awesome energy because this new moon does have the influence of Mars around it as well. And Mars is, you know, it can be very fiery, very temperamental, very argumentative. But Mars is also bringing in that energy boost for you, this go-getter kind of attitude, this let's get her done, let's get it started, let's not sit back. So it's like we've kind of got this infusing energy. I feel like the clarity, the purity, the cleansing, purging comes first. And then you've got um, you're setting the wheels in motion and you're taking action. 
on something. So if you've been procrastinating about anything, you're probably going to feel a little bit of a proverbial energetic kick in the butt it, just to just to help to get the ball rolling for you and get yourself moving and shaken. It's like a re-energize and reinvigorate um, yourself there. So whatever you want to get going on, whatever you want to take action on, the time is now, my friends, all right? Whether it's simply writing down some intentions or making some big, bold moves. Let's see what else we get here for you. We have Moon Mastery, the Law of Attraction. How very benefiting for you again. Okay, the Law of Attraction, New Moon, Sagittarius, Jupiter, good luck, good fortune, expansion, growth, new beginnings, you name it. Okay, you are being very encouraged to work with this moon. Very important to set those intentions, make a big wish, make a big wish, right? But then we need to remember once we set our intentions, once we make our wish out into the universe, right? We've already taken some action. We're already get the ball rolling. But then purity energy, we need to let it go. We need to trust that as soon as we've set our intentions and made ourselves clear, right? Then already energetically, everything that we've wanted, everything we've wished for is already there for us and all we need to do is be open and allow go with the flow take action where we're encouraged to take action walk through doors and portals that are opening for us and you'd be amazed what starts to happen for you and keep an open heart keep an open mind very sagittarian in its energy we also have the moon's reflection accept responsibility and this can be part of you know gaining wisdom and knowledge and clarity this can be Part of cleansing and purging, forgiving and releasing in this, right? When we take accountability, we take responsibility for our lives, right? Sometimes it's very easy sometimes to fall into the trap, and it is a trap, of sitting back and go, everything, everything's happening to me. Everything, it, you know, if it wasn't for bad luck, I wouldn't have any luck at all. And, you know, life keeps throwing me curveballs and you might feel out of control and you might feel like, you know, life is happening to you. Life is always happening for you. And when we change that outlook, when we change that perspective, right, then this actually gives us a little bit more responsibility and accountability, right? Life happens for me. What am I going to do with this issue, with this, op with this opportunity? Because even a challenge, even an issue, even a setback, even a rock bottom scenario is always encouraging you to take responsibility, to take charge to do something about it, to turn, you know, life throws you a big bucket of lemons. What are you going to do? I'm going to make lemon meringue pie and I'm going to make some lemon cookies and because I don't love lemonade, right? But maybe you're just going to make lemonade, right? So it's making, turning something good out of something bad. And when we take responsibility for things that happen for us in our lives, it is an incredibly significant turning point and it changes our whole outlook and our whole perspective we also have the dark moon with the past all right now the dark moon happens right before the new moon okay and this is where we do get some cleansing and purging it's where we do get some healing um, energy in this so you know you could really be right in the full swing of Figuring out what has been holding you back, figuring out why you haven't taken action on something, figuring out why you're still triggered with something, right? And we know that there's there's things from our past experiences that we haven't 100% dealt with yet when we get that instant trigger response, when we get an emotional response to something, right? And, you know, it's it's quite often just instant, like they hit the last nerve kind of thing. So this is a great energy when we work with the dark moon, boom, we're releasing, we're letting things go, we're finding forgiveness in our heart, we're finding healing in our heart, and you know we're really reflecting on things that have happened in our past. And it's our opportunity to really cut some energetic cords and you know even just the word forgiveness and even just the word the past can be triggering for some people. And the thing is, is that we, through our past experiences, we gain wisdom, we gain insight, we gain knowledge and experience. The What have we've gone through in the past usually teaches us what works for us, what doesn't work for us, what we're willing to accept, 
and where we need to put up boundaries. And if we don't have those past experiences, we don't know any of that. So you're encouraged here to recognize something from your past that may actually be coming up again now. It's your opportunity to find closure or maybe to seize the moment again, right? You may have that second chance. But whether you're cleansing and purging or whether you're seizing the moment and reviving a goal, a dream, a situation, there's something here from your past that is front and center in this new moon energy today. And you're all going to be in a slightly different position, right? You all have different things going on in your world. So um, again, take that step back, quiet your conscious mind, connect with your energy. Right, what is going on in your world? So, we also have here we've got the Four of Cups in reverse, the Queen of Wands, and the Knight of Pentacles. So, very lovely. The Six of Wands is at the back of the deck. So, the underlying energy here is victory, success, being in the spotlight, riding the winds of change and the winds of your success. This is putting yourself out there and this is celebrating and rejoicing all of your accomplishments, the big, the small, the past, the present and the future. This is where we're confident, we're putting ourselves out there, we're making moves, we're moving forward, we're rising above obstacles and challenges and we're better for it. So remember that wherever you happen to be. Now the Four of Cups, the Queen of Wands, and the Knight of Pentacles. Some of you, you are tossing something out the window. There might be something here that's coming to fruition for you or something here that you couldn't previously see and now maybe you do see something, right? And this is your opportunity perhaps to really release and let go. The Four of Cups sometimes can, in the upright anyway, come in with a, an energy of apathy, of disinterest, of being on the verge of giving up because you can't see something, right? Or you're tired of waiting for something or you're missing something. There's something that you don't quite see. So when we get this, you can be really experiencing a turning point in your energy at this new moon. And instead of feeling kind of down or disinterested, all of a sudden you are revived. You are re-energized in this. And especially with that queen of wands there, you're open, you're receptive, you're ready, you're independent, you're strong, you're creative, and you're feeling a little bit more inspired and motivated than perhaps you have been. So if you've been through a down patch, man, oh man, here is that fiery Sagittarian Mars energy giving you that fighting spirit, giving you that big energy boost. Maybe even um, you might even fi find yourself finding new sources of inspiration at this new moon. Uninspired, four of cups, but we're letting that go. And in the queen of wands energy, inspire. So this is very exciting. This is feeling good about yourself, about your situation, being willing to make change or being willing to accept opportunities that are um, coming towards you. Some of you here, there's something here you know isn't working for you, right? The Queen of Wands, you're feeling more confident, bold, strong, brave, but you're very much in the flow, very connected with this new moon. And with the Knight of Pentacles, very interesting because the Knight of Pentacles can be that something is coming towards you. This Knight of Pentacles is coming towards this Queen of Wands. So you could be gaining some wisdom, insight, knowledge at this new moon. You might be setting intentions for a new job, a new career path, right? And this can be something that where you've already set the wheels in motion, possibly um, around the eclipse season that we had in October in the fall. And this can be where something is coming to fruition for you now. The Knight of Pentacles can represent investment opportunities, money coming your way, um, promotions, raises, um, uh, all of the good stuff, okay? Um, it can all be coming towards you and it's important to be ready to receive it or to take action on it that Queen of Wands, okay? So, so it can be some very beneficial for you in this energy. This can also show that there's something here where we want something new or we want to work towards something. So with the Knight of Pentacles there, you could be making a new purchase. Um, you could be uh, 
just setting intentions for something that you want to grow and something that you're willing to wait for for a while, right? Sometimes we want things like instantly, we want things here and now, um, but the Knight of Pentacles is very slow, very slow to blossom, very slow to come in, and it does take a while to get what we want. But I feel here in this energy that some of you may be in a situation where you may want to invest your money, something that has slow growth, but is very stable and very secure. So this may be the new moon for you where you recognize that you don't want to take risky risky chances with your money, right? You don't want to risk losing it. You would rather have something that grows slow and steady rather than something that might be a part of a get rich quick scheme, that kind of thing. So just be um, a little bit aware of that, right? Because there's some, you know, banking and stuff like that that might be a little bit volatile. So just see where your investments are right now. And if you feel like maybe, you know, you're not 100% comfortable with where they are, you might want to park your money somewhere that is a little bit more safe and secure for the long term. The Knight of Pentacles can be something very long term, right? And so whether you've got something coming in or whether you set in some intentions, the Knight of Pentacles is an incredibly positive influence for you. All right. So I'm going to leave all that there, you guys. Um, I thank you so very much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful, lucky, blessed new moon. Don't forget to set those intentions and to let those go and trust that the universe is doing its job for you. All right. So I thank you guys. If you liked your video, please do hit that like button. It really helps me out and leave a comment in the box down below. Where are you setting your intentions? What are you looking to change? What are you looking to start? Where do you feel lucky? So I'm going to leave that there. Have a great day. Have a great new moon. And I'll see you later. Bye.